Hello again. My name is Rolo Wexford, and I only tell the truth. I'm going to write an important book, and I'd like your help. This is meant to be the first book in what I'm calling the Age of Stories Project. The Age of Stories Project is, in its best form, uh, supposed to be a platform for diverse voices to do something meaningful in popular fantasy. On the Age of Stories website, I set up a constantly recycling world and some archetypes and set pieces that are meant to help each iteration of that world feel consistent. Um, kind of the concession of the universe is that it gets consumed and reborn with every age. That's a little play on the whole age of stories thing. The archetypes and touchstones are easily accessible because they're just reskinned versions of things that are already in the, you know, collective unconscious. Just by using something as simple as color symbolism, you can kind of point everybody's imagination in one direction and let them know, hey, we're talking about things on this level, um, even though the fiction itself is, you know, talking about a cool, uh, you know, action fantasy story or whatever. Yeah. By clearly laying out the, I don't know, purpose or the meaning behind the symbols and focusing each story on kind of the interplay of the archetypes uh, and the set pieces over the setting, um, we should be able to look at these, you know, human constants uh, from a bunch of diverse perspectives. And I think that has a lot of value. Probably the easiest of these archetypes to connect with is in every age, there are going to be two characters who represent life and death. You know, everything that it means to be alive rather than just surviving, and then kind of all the complex stuff that goes along with the idea of death and, you know, those left behind versus people who actually die. Um, different cultures have different perspectives on what those ideas look like and the purpose, the you know, things that we're supposed to learn from those ideas. And those are the kind of things that I'm trying to highlight. You know, the, the things that make two cultures different, but makes each of them beautiful, right? That's what I'm going for. One of the benefits of tapping into these pre-existing narrative structures and using them as, you know, puppets on the stage is that the world never has to end. If we're focusing on archetypes over characters, then the characters can't get stale because those, that character's story will end and he'll be replaced with a slightly different version of the things that that character represents. The reason that's benefit is because you hate when fantasy stories end. That statistically, that's just true. You probably watched Game of Thrones, and you probably had something terrible to say about the last episode. And that's okay, because it's not really the fact that it was a bad ending that bothers any of us. It's the fact that we're not going to be hanging out with the same people that we were hanging out with an hour a week for eight years, or however long it was on. And so by focusing on archetypes over characters and set pieces over setting, nothing ever has to get old. The endings can feel satisfying and we can all still look forward to the idea that we're going to see, you know, a slightly different version of this character from somebody else's point of view. And that should be equally interesting, assuming all the authors are equally talented. My goal is for each of the novels in this project to be self-contained. If the universe that it's set in is infinite and can connect from age to age to age, there's no reason to draw out a single story for seven books, right? Uh, we can have big 300,000 word stories, but if that's the story, let's keep that story in that book. And then what we'll examine, the stuff that will connect us from story to story to story, will be how those archetypes show up again and again and again through different lenses. I think an interesting exception to this rule would be anthologies. I think a cool anthology uh, set in this universe would focus on, you know, one of these human constants, right? The difference between like love that comes from your heart and love that comes from your genitals might be a really interesting topic for authors, uh, uh, you know, across the gender and sexuality spectrums. It's also important to me that all of these stories stretch beyond the page and really engage your imagination after you close the book. If you click down uh, on the link below to the sample chapter, you'll notice at the very, very end, there's five things that happened over the course of that year that the sample chapter covers that I don't talk about in any more detail other than kind of the little seeds there at the bottom. And that's because I want you to have to read those, and then I want you to have to think about them, right? I want you to think about how those uh, ideas manifest in your imagination as opposed to mine. I, wanna, I want you to see how your experiences affect your vision. And that goes back to that idea of diverse lenses uh, for the different story. I'm Irish Catholic. The way that I view the personification of life and death is going to be a whole lot different than a female Southern Baptist or a trans-secular humanist. I want to know how everybody's background, all their different experiences, affect the things that are present in all our lives, regardless of our different experiences, right? I want to know how the individual experience affects the human experience. Well, that's great.
But assuming you're not a professional author, what does this have to do with you? I'm going to quote one of history's great leaders and philosophers. You're my only hope. For this idea to bear fruit, somebody has to tend the tree. I'm willing to do that, but I still have to eat and pay bills. That's only part of it. If I'm out here watering and tending the leaves, then you're the sunshine. The bigger this thing grows, the more attention it can get. If we can show the world that there's interest here, it'll attract talented people who have something to say. And those are the kind of people who should be writing, who should be the pioneers here. In the best of all possible worlds, we'll have Warwick Davis narrating the audiobook and the talented folks over at Fat Shark doing a video game spinoff. More realistically, I'll probably just worship at the altar of John Joseph Adams and try to attract some really talented people to do a focused anthology so that maybe we can learn something from it. But this is capitalism. In order to be successful, first we have to demonstrate success. And that's where the Kickstarter comes in. So let's try this. If you listen this far and this sounds like something you can believe in, click on the Kickstarter and let's make something. Good night and good luck.